Hey guys, I'm Rebecca. And I'm Ashley. Today, we are here at Walking Mountains to explore the ecosystems around us. We're gonna go to two very different spots on the Walking Mountains campus and look for some abiotic and biotic factors. Come with us. Here we are in a riparian ecosystem. As you can see, we have a pond behind us and a river way over there. Before we get started, we are going to make some observations about this area and what makes it unique. So let's look around. Take a look around. What do you notice? So Ashley, what did you observe? Well, I saw some water, definitely, and a lot of bigger plants um, and some animals. Even I think a fish jumped out of the water. I saw all these ripples Whoa. and heard some noise. All right, so now that we've made some observations, we are gonna go exploring to see what biotic and abiotic factors we can find here. Um, Rebecca? Yeah? What's an abiotic and biotic factor? Oh, great question. If you think about biology as the study of life, and you think of biotic, biotic mm -hmm. means a living thing, so plants oh. and animals. Abiotic is the opposite of that, so anything that's non-living in an ecosystem, like rocks, or dirt, or water. So the living things, the biotic things, would be like me and you, and the yeah. plants and the animals? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Are you ready to explore? Let's go. Let's go. So Ashley, I see an abiotic factor and a biotic factor in the water, which is also an abiotic factor. Wow. Do you see what I see? Well, all of this green stuff kind of tells me it's probably a living plant. Yeah, that's and, algae. Oh, okay, algae. And some of it is using, like, it's resting on the branches. Maybe it's using it as part of its habitat to get closer to the sunlight. So we find algae in bodies of water where it likes to grow. Right. I've often seen, like, a turtle hanging out on top of the log, also getting sunbathed. So I imagine those logs are really important to riparian ecosystems that provide habitat or places for animals to sunbathe. That's a great idea, absolutely. This is a really interesting plant. Rebecca, have you seen this one before? Yeah, and we find this in a lot of riparian ecosystems. This is a willow shrub and moose actually love these plants. And so that's why a lot of the times you'll find moose in riparian environments. So here we have some cattails and cattails typically grow near a body of water like our pond and they grow super tall so that their seeds can be out of the water. They're also an invasive species, meaning that they are not from here and they overtake an area and outgrow all of the other plants that would typically grow here. Rebecca, I did notice that this place has a lot of snow. It definitely does. And the reason is because in the riparian area, there's a lot more tall trees that provide shade. And we also here have this hillside that when the sun comes up in the morning, it takes a while. So this area is in the shade for most of the day, which oh. means the snow doesn't melt as quickly. Well, that makes sense. Wow, oh, Rebecca, we've seen so much in this riparian area. We have, and we're actually not even near the pond anymore. We're by the river. What did you find? Check it out, I just found a sign of a beaver. Oh, you did. How do you know this is a beaver? Well, because usually a beaver, the way that their teeth are so long, they cut around the tree and it comes to a point at the top, just like this one. That's and exactly beavers, right. beavers, I think, are really important riparian areas because of the dams that they build. And actually, they're called ecosystem engineers. Absolutely, and actually, I see something that looks similar to a beaver habitat right over there. Wow, let's go take a look, get a closer look at it. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have what looks to be the workings of a beaver near the Walking Mountains campus. Can you make a guess as to what might have gone on here? Wow, 
the riparian area has so much to find. Thanks for coming along with me. Oh, that was so much fun. Thank you for showing me around. Yeah, let's go to our second location on the Walking Mountains campus and see what else we can find today. Oh, I'm excited. All right, we are in our second spot on the Walking Mountains campus, and it's pretty different from our first spot. Before we get started exploring, why don't we look around and make some observations about how this place is different. What do you notice about this place? Ashley, what did you observe? Well, really, I noticed that it's much drier up here. There's not a lot of snow left, and it gets a lot of sunshine. And there's not a lot of trees, actually. Much smaller bushes. Did those, you are, notice? those are great observations. So it is much drier up here, and we are actually in a shrubland ecosystem. So we're gonna find some different biotic and abiotic factors than we found at the riparian ecosystem. Let's go explore. I know this one. I've smelled this one before. I really enjoy the smell. Have you smelled this one before? Oh yeah, this is sagebrush. So, and that great smell that we love is actually what keeps insects away from this plant because they don't like that smell. Wow. Oh, check it out, Rebecca. I just noticed. You see this orange stuff on here? Yeah. What do you think that is? Oh, I've seen this before, usually in dry areas, on top of rocks or dead trees. And this is lichen, and lichen actually helps to break down other abiotic factors like rocks and dead trees. Wow, so there's a relationship between a living and a non-living thing. Lichen, which is the living, and the rock, which is non-living. Absolutely. Let's see what else we can find over here. Cool. What did you find? Oh, Rebecca, I found some snail shells. Do you think that's an abiotic or a biotic factor? Well, I can tell that these snails are no longer alive. Do you see how white they are? Yeah. When they're living, they're usually more like a more brown color. And you can look inside and see a whole snail body when they're living. And right now I just see a really empty shell with some dirt inside. So I don't know, one time they were living, maybe they're not living anymore, but I wonder if even though they're not living anymore, they could be important to nature here. What do you think? Other organisms could use those shells for something now that the snail is no longer in it. Yeah, if I was like a little spider, I might try to make a home out of the yeah. snail shell. Oh man, Ashley, I feel like I'm getting sunburned. Should we put some sunscreen on? It's yeah. so sunny in here. The sun is really feeling pretty strong right now. And because we're so high up in the mountains, we can get a sunburn pretty easily. wonder, Rebecca, why there are that many trees in this place. That's what feels really different about this area compared to the pond for me. I don't see any big tall trees, but we did say that there's a lot of sunlight here and there's also a lot of sunlight at the pond. What makes this place so different? Well, if you look around, you don't see a big body of water like we saw when we were right next to the pond, which is a big body of water. So there isn't as much water for these plants to use to grow. You're right. 